Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Gibbs. I'm the founder of Dialine and I'd like to welcome you to Dialine Decoded. I wanna give a big thank you to Sappy for making this episode possible. With Decoded, it's our goal for you to take away fresh inspiration and learn some behind the scenes tips and tricks to pitching, concepting, developing, and designing Dialine worthy brands. And today we'll be decoding the design process behind Sweet Dirt Cannabis, designed by Pulp and Wire. Sweet Dirt is a brand that offers a carefully curated collection of premium cannabis and cannabis infused products to all of Maine and its visitors. And I'm so excited to introduce our next speaker, Taja Dockendorf, the founder and owner of Pulp and Wire. Taja has shaped Pulp and Wire into a branding and packaging powerhouse with the vision, drive, and resourcefulness that's unique to entrepreneurs. Her knowledge and passion have inspired a long string of branding, packaging, and creative campaigns that have ignited sales for scores of natural, organic, and lifestyle brands, both locally and nationally. Taj has become a cheerleader, a creative conduit, and a brand therapist for her clients, empowering them to blaze their own trails from the revitalized brand foundations that she helps them to build. A driven entrepreneur, Taja is also a contributing editor for Forbes Online and an investor in emerging brands and technology. Taja has co-founded multiple other brands and companies outside of Pulp & Wire over the years, allowing her the insights and understanding key to being an integral part of any brand strategy and any growth plan. Please welcome Taja. Thank you, Sappy, and thank you, The Dialine Decoded, for having me on today. My name is Taja Dockendorf. I am the owner and creative director at Pulp & Wire, located here in Portland, Maine. Love to go over a little bit of what we're gonna talk about today. Today, we're gonna to focus on our Sweet Dirt project. And because I love structure, here's what we're gonna talk about. A quick intro and backstory, what we do, the Sweet Dirt project, our process, print and finish, and then really the magical piece here is the locally produced and the sustainability piece that we're gonna to talk to. So before we get into that, a little bit about myself. I started the company about 16 years ago as a creative, that is my background, initially in industrial design, working in the automotive side, and then found my love for graphic design, but I've really taken these two pieces and think through three-dimensionally, which is why I love packaging, why making dye lines is my happy place on a daily basis. But really, the biggest thing I learned in after my education was being in the larger agency setting and realizing who I wanted to be as a creative and where I wanted to sit at the table in with the client and in the bigger microcosm of the design side. So in creating the company, that's what I did. I really brought the creative central to the process. We are a team of strategists, creatives, brand builders, digital marketers, all understanding and wanting to sit at the table with the brand to help them be the best possible brand they can be as we help grow them to market. From being in Boston to New York and back to Boston, Maine is where I grew up and it's where I wanted to call home. There is nothing better than being able to look out my window and see the ocean or in 45 minutes be to the lake. And this is where I've had an amazing team from all over the U.S. also want to live this lovely life in Maine doing amazing work for international brands. So some of the brands we work with, quickly scrolling through here, both big and small. We want to bring them to market with a cocktail of services, and that really starts with three different pieces. Str strategy, market research, how we're going to grow them to market, figuring out their roadmap. Who are they going to be when they grow up someday? Or in the case of larger brands, who do they need to be to stay relevant? And then on the smaller brands, we help them figure out exactly who they are, their name, and how they're going to get to launch so that they can compete with the bigger brands as well. The uh, three stages is really market research, strategy, the middle piece being brand packaging. How does it come to life? What is that emotion that you have with the packaging that helps fulfill and support the strategy? And then at the end, how do we grow them to market? And that is digital marketing, social media, content creation. And I'll walk through a few pieces of that work in a little bit to show you some of the work that we've done for our brands and explain some of our process and work also. A few things about what we believe in. So this, this is kind of our manifesto. This is what we all believe in here with the 20 of us. But being good listeners is the first step to building a strong brand experience. It's, if it's not working, we pivot. That is my biggest thing from being a designer early on and understanding the brands and talking with the brands was really how do we continuously listen and sometimes talk less, listen more. But if it's not working, where do we pivot and where do we put our ego aside, which comes to one of my other points in a little bit. But uh, care combined with efficiency, we're nimble while remaining thoughtful. We want to be very flexible for brands, both small and large, because sometimes they do need to have that flexibility to grow. 
Partnerships are better than projects, so collaboration is critical. That is a huge piece for me is the working relationship with the brands. I love long-term brands. I want to keep them with us for the long stretch of time so we can help them grow and help them rethink who they're going to be. Uh, still, from the day I started 16 years ago, I still have some of my first brands that have stayed with me as well. So I want to think that's a wonderful testament to us really being good listeners and understanding where and when we need to pivot. Our work and our brands should do good in the world. We'll get to that a little bit more with this project. Uh, be honest, be humble, and create brands you're proud to see on the shelf. That's the most important part. You want to be excited. You want to love what you do. I love what I do. And it's not work. And that's really what I want for all my team members. I want them to love and have that same passion for everything that we do. And then our, mon our motto, our mantra, if you will, we came here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. We're all out of bubblegum. That is a homage to the 1988 John Carpenter film, They Live. Extra bonus points later if you can tell me who said that in the film. And some pictures rotating back in the background are just examples of our office and what we've created in our home now that we're all coming back into office as well and the spaces that we share together. So looking through some of our work, Allagash Beverage Company, you might know Allagash White, it's pretty well known. Uh, we helped them not rebrand who they were or rethink who they were, but we wanted to tell the story better. We wanted to innovate on the story and bring the story to life for what Allagash White was. So in the case of Allagash White, we helped them expand the visual of what was on that small posted stamp on their initial bottle and then bring it to cans. And how do we continue to tell the story without changing the story? In this case, we, we joked that we hiked further up the trail. If you remember what the initial Allagash logo looked like, it was kind of looking into a river with some falling leaves. We hiked further up the trail to take a better view of the Allagash. Another brand we did for Allagash was helping them with their Little Grove line. This is a subline for Allagash and a first foray into low ABV. So for them, they really wanted to focus on bringing in a bit more of a feminine market. That's what they were hearing was that they wanted to appeal to seltzer drinkers. They wanted to appeal to those who just wanted a beer but didn't want the high alcohol level. So Little Grove has developed and they are these sparkling session ales. They come out, they're different ones every year, but the idea was to have this fun, flowing, light, airy look that would really tell the story very quickly on shelf to consumers who didn't want a heavy beer but loved Allagash. This next piece is Dr. Prager's. So a wonderful brand, vegetarian, they just make amazing food and we get to bring it to life for them. So these are some examples of visual content and social content that we have made for the brand that then goes out on newsletters, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. Uh, but this is where we get to play with our food. And that is what we love for brands like Dr. Prager's. Next, this fun little tahini brand, Soom. They are smaller and emerging. We get to rebrand them as well. So you can see their initial look on the left. And then on the right is the new look that we help them with, cleaning up their logo. They love the script. They like the colors. It just, they needed it to feel and pop more on the shelf. And through some animations we created, through these lovely little illustrations that are on their labels, and then bigger picture pieces and building their website as well to help tell the story, uh, really helped Zoom come to life and rebrand themselves and just launched most recently at Expo East. Uh, another brand, uh, American Liquor Company, Alco. This started, uh, was originally a brand way back when, so a heritage brand. They had purchased the rights to Alco and then it was a Boston-based brand. So here we're telling the story of Boston Heritage. Station C, we've got Third Rider, the Red Paul Revere. Uh, we've got the Express, and then we have Ship's Haven. These rums and whiskeys were created to tell the story of Boston in a fun way that, hey, you know, you might as well learn some trivia while you're drinking. But they also are, the story is told through the illustrations that we created and then the stories that happen around the bottle as you turn it around. A brand near and dear to me is Rind. This is one that I remember sitting with the brand owner in a coffee shop in New York talking about the what ifs of this brand and then where it's come to today with starting with their chewy line of fruits and then moving into their most recent chips launch. A wonderful project because it really shows how a brand can flex between different categories on the shelf. Where chewy is more on the dried fruit side, the chips we really wanted to compete in the chip aisle. So how do we bring fruit into the chip aisle in an innovative way that still works with the brand, but also pushes it a bit further. And then we've got Vermont Creamery. These just launched, and this is their new sour cream line. Um, amazing, beautiful sour cream. I don't think we can eat enough of this in the office, 
but this is new packaging that we help them with as well. And then a fun brand, uh, Living Nuts, really pushing a retro spin for them. There'll be more coming out with this brand and new website soon. But just a fun package that had all these metallic features and the ways that you can make an innovative label without blowing the budget. So these were all metalized film, but bold colors, big kind of retro -y fonts, and then really getting to play with our food again in some of this imagery to help bring these labels and this package and this brand to life. And then last, we're going to end on a really cute dog because that's the best way to end any portfolio work. Um, I love it when a client says, we want something scientific, but we also want it to feel warm and inviting. You, you know, you've always gotten, I'm sure all of you have gotten that, where you get these cute juxtaposition phrases. And you're like, all right, how are we going to pull this together? But that was what Elevet was. It was about finding the balance of heart and science. So these are CBD and CBDA, mobility, chews, oils, all for pets to help with calm, anxiety, thunderstorms, you name it. But a wonderful project in helping them also with some great dog photography to help bring, bring the brand to life, along with the research and strategy we did up front and then into the packaging and branding as well. All right, that is enough about us. Let's move into Sweet Dirt. So for Sweet Dirt, Here's what we did. We were defining a brand online and in retail. So to do that, it is all about the right message to the right people at the right time to drive sales. Here's a little peek at Sweet Dirt as we dig into it. So Sweet Dirt is carefully curated cannabis. And as you can see, it's digging out of the dirt, which I will explain a bit more as we get through the who, what, where, and when. So who? The project is Sweet Dirt. They are a Maine-based cannabis grower. They do only soil-grown cannabis, hence the name Sweet Dirt. They are located in both Waterville and Portland, Maine. And they wanted to tell the story of Sweet Dirt to better highlight the magic of the soil-grown cannabis. This brand also launched in late 2020, or not the brand, the brand had been around for a while, but the new packaging had launched in 2020. So when we dug into Sweet Dirt, it was really important to understand the brand ethos. So we started with messaging, brand strategy, who are you going to be, how are we going to change, what needs to change. And sometimes when you get into that strategy side, you realize, is every, does everything need to change or just a few things? And that's really, again, being humble and listening to the client and understanding what aspects they do want to evolve. So in this case, as we'll see in a little bit, there were parts of their logo they there were aspects of the brand and what they were doing and that they knew that this, this cannabis was being grown in the soil and in the most beautiful way possible to create the best product, but we needed messaging around it. So here, nature knows how to grow. Um, we started the project with, again, the strategic messaging, understanding the key differentiators, tone of voice, tagline, all to map out what the opportunity was going to be. And then the outcome, just to read this because it's a beautiful statement, uh, the secret lies in local living soil and their passion and patience to nurture plants and the potential without additives, fillers, or toxins. From the design of their greenhouses to the way they prepare their soil to the choices they make in the product packaging, Sweet Dirt strives to do right by Mother Nature. So that really sums up the background and the ethos as to who they are and why we made the choices we did when it came to packaging and design. So again, Sweet Dirt, the finest flower from the sweetest soil. That sums up the name. And that is what we needed kind of in that brand statement to help you get why the name Sweet Dirt. So Sweet Dirt cannabis, organically grown in living soil. It's hand trimmed with care, premium flower strains, topicals, edibles, extracts, they do all of it. But they are also uh, MOFCA certified. So MOFCA is a main organic and gardeners association. And it's very hard to actually get this clean cannabis certification. So they are one of a handful of brands that were actually able to achieve this. So let's go back to the beginning. When they came to us, this is what they looked like. This was their logo up at the top. They had this monogram of the S and the D with these tree rings and a very clean sans serif typeface for Sweet Dirt. So we first started after our research and background and having all of our conversations. So then dig into some vision boards. This is ultimately where we landed, which was a selection of brands and packaging and things to inspire the idea of unearthing this sacred gem, which was sweet dirt from the dirt. So we knew it was going to be a little bit darker. We knew it'd be a little bit edgier, but we also, there were things that they didn't want to lose, which you will see shortly. So with their logo, which is the one on the left, 
and the one on the right is where we landed. So the concentric tree rings, again, playing back into Mother Nature was something that was very important to them. They wanted to bring in this idea of a shovel, which in the new logo ended up being this badge in the background, which is a bit more subtle, but it's definitely there. And then keeping the S and the D monogram was very important to them. So we wanted to clean up the tree rings and make them feel a bit more organic, a bit more strain-like, almost like roots growing out of the ground, and also still tie in with these concentric tree rings that they loved. And then it was about the sweet turp brand and typography. We didn't want it to be perfect. We wanted it to be playful. We want it to be a little bit older, something that could be a bit more apothecary, something that you would have seen maybe 100 years ago, but still felt modern into how we were going to execute it on the packaging. So what you're seeing on the left was there before, and on the right was our after. So these are some early explorations to show you where we started in the packaging as well. I think this is always so important to see behind the curtain. And of course, these are early round ones that we had tossed around in-house. But I think it's good to see also that designer's process. So everything from light to dark is where we started. And where we landed was this beautiful illustration in the background that actually are there parts of Maine. There's mountains back there that if you're from Maine, you may recognize. There's a trail. There's a little pond that leads into the back. So there's a lot happening in this illustration, which was the main backdrop for all of their flower bags. As we get into the other packaging, you'll see that we simplified things a bit on some of the extract boxes and then the cartridge boxes. But here, again, this is the story. We wanted you to feel like you were going into the woods with Sweet Dirt. You're going into the greenhouse. And then this touch of magic is the copper foil that you see. So this was brought out by, and we'll talk about the process a bit later, but metalized films because we wanted that gem, that rare metal, that earth that you can kind of unearth from the dirt and, again, have this moment of really feeling like you've got something special. So the details, print and finish. This is where I get excited. I love these aspects. So what you're seeing on the left are is the packaging. Those are our cartridge packages and then also our um, so like crystals and batter go in those smaller boxes. As I said before, the, um, the bags were all for flour. So here we used a paper board. We used a uh, C1S, so coated on one side. We used the coated side on the exterior, uncoated on the interior. And it was a sappy sheet uh, from their proto line. And the stock was chosen because of its ability to hold multiple finishes. We did a lot on these. So this was uh, one PMS metallic on the inside. We did a soft touch finish on the outside. It was a four color process because we also have these modulating gradients that go from dark to light with overlaying um, tree rings as well. We embossed on it and we also foiled it. So a lot happening and we had pretty complex dye lines as well. But the biggest piece is that it's all fully recyclable. So even the foil is a solvent free recyclable foil, which is pretty awesome. So bags and labels, those were metalized film. They can be recycled and they have a paper label stock that goes on top. So those are fully customizable. We wanted Sweet Dirt to be able to have a line where they didn't feel they were locked into having to have specific bags for every single strain. So here we created a very flexible system in which we could have the boxes for the extracts and the cartridges and allow them a very flexible labeling system for both the bags and all the packaging. So the bags again were metalized film. Um, spot white so that we could get that copper foil to really pop and then soft touch finish on everything else to really have it draw back and have that beautiful kind of silky finish. Then on the dye lines, these were all very customized and specialized because that little glass jar that you see that sits inside the extract box for the crystals and the batter and shatter and everything else, we wanted it to sit up in the box. We didn't want it to rattle around in there. So we really created this little pedestal, this little home that it sits in very snugly. So when you open the box, you're having this aha moment. Um, and when you open the box, it is that metal eye or the um, metallic Pantone ink. And then on the top of the box, it's fully embossed with those tree rings as well with the foil. So it tactically, full tactical feel to it. So this is the magic. The paper, the printing, the design, the company was all in Maine. So all the folding box materials were made and produced and printed with, they were made and produced by Sappy. So they came from the Sappy paper mill uh, that was in Skowhegan. They traveled maybe 20 miles down the road to J.S. McCarthy, who's in Augusta. And I put them on a little map so you could see where everyone is. And J.S. McCarthy has a, they, they print based on wind power. They're an amazing printer, very sustainable. That is a big part of their mission. 
Uh, and then we were designing them here in Portland. So we weren't traveling very far to see the client either. And we had to have a great relationship with all the companies. So it was very easy to do things very succinctly. And then Sweet Dirt, they're growing everything here in Maine. They're selling it here in Maine. This closed, slightly closed loop system, this obviously things that we had to source from out of state for some of the other products, was all packaged and sold in less than a 100 mile radius. So when you start thinking about your paper and your finishing and where it's all coming from, this was really, when it did all come together, it was pretty magical to be able to say that, wow, we really kept as much of this in Maine as we could in one state. Uh, and that's, that's very hard to do. So as we think about Sweet Dirt and the future of Sweet Dirt, we have these bags. We also have done um, pre-roll containers for them. We've got the concentrates. We've got the um, cartridges. But also there's a full line of edibles coming out where this pattern and this design also morphs and changes a little bit and it lightens up, kind of like you've got an evening and then you've got a night. So really thinking about the plant itself and when it can enliven and when it can be used during the day and then where it's better in the evening. So really playing into a lot of emotional benefits of the product as well as we think through the full line. And edibles will be coming out in a future line very soon as well. So partners, just want to say a big thank you to both Sweet Dirt for entrusting their baby with us to help them grow, Sappy and JS McCarthy for also being amazing partners in helping us pull this project together in such a beautiful, sustainable way as well. And a big thank you to the Dye Line Decoded and also some of our valued partners as well, uh, Lone Spruce Creative, the ones who did these beautiful shots of Sweet Dirt for us and a lot of the packaging that you're seeing throughout our portfolio was shot by our dear friend photographer, Nina Galant as well. So always love to give credit when credit is due. And that is a snapshot into Sweet Dirt. And thank you, Sappy and Dialine Decoded for allowing me to walk through this project. Hi, Taja. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Um, this was a great project. Um, uh, so many people in the chat are just giving you so many compliments about the project and about um, just how beautiful it is and how great it looks. So let's get into some questions some some people have. Um, so one of the questions is, how important was the creative brief for this project? That's a great question. I think creative briefs are incredibly important. We started with discovery and strategy and messaging and then vision boards. So we were really setting a roadmap before we got into this project, to really kind of put everything in place and understand the bigger project before we jumped into design. And then the, of course, the Q&A that we do with the client to set that initial discovery is always incredibly important, but I, I'm a big proponent of planning before jumping into creative. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah, I'm sure this was like a, a big undertaking, but um, so the brief was super important. Um, one question is, how do you visualize the printing for the packaging? There's, you spoke so much about like the finishes and the paper and everything. How do you go about doing that with, um, and there were so many different components to this project. So do, how do you visualize, like, do you choose the paper first? Do you choose the printing and then the paper? How do you go about all of the printing. Yeah, all the finishing touches and the little details are such an important part of design for me because it really is about that tactile feel, the emotional and the relationship you have with packaging when you pick it up. So all those little details, especially on Sweet Dirt that were foil and embossing, finishes, those were all ones we were talking about early on in the process in the project. So right when we're doing the design and as we're kind of working through these early rounds with the clients, these are all things that we're thinking about and talking about because that's where the design can really come to life. So that was an incredibly important part. And then when it comes to finding the right paper that can hold all of those finishing treatments, we work closely with our printers because we can dream of everything that we want this design to be. But ultimately, it's incredibly important to work closely with your partner, uh, printers and vendors to understand what paper is going to hold everything properly, what makes the most sense. From a timing standpoint, even, you could have these grandiose ideas and these great paper ideas, but then you find out that there's six months of <laughs> ordering time. So it really is about trying to figure out how to get all these magical pieces to come together at the same time. But we think through finishing right at the very early stages of a project. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice. Um, 
for, uh, for the longest time, lots of agencies wouldn't really touch cannabis. Obviously, that's changed a ton. Uh, but can you talk about why the cannabis category speaks to you and the agency? I I just believe in it. And I've been, always been an, an early believer in the product from CBD, the hemp plant itself and all of its magical qualities. I mean, it's it's tensile strength, ultimately. It's an amazing, um, you know, heat, like insulation even, and it grows so fast, but then there's medicinal qualities. So there's so many amazing things about the hemp plant and cannabis from a medicinal standpoint, from a therapeutic standpoint, from a transdermal standpoint, all the way into kind of a lifestyle side that I just believe in. And I know that a lot of agencies stayed away from it because they were afraid of the, the taboo side of, oh, you know, that's what's going to get you high. And we, our other clients might not, you know, want to work with us if we're pushing something that is, you know, a considered, you know, quote unquote, a drug related, you know, project. But it, I never saw it as that. It was never a concern to me that says, oh, we shouldn't pursue this because our clients might not believe in it, but we do. So that was an important piece. And, and I love the potentiality of where cannabis is and where it is going and where it can go. And that's all the way from CBD products to, you know, hybrid THC cannabis as well. So for me, it was never a scary topic. It was one that I was familiar with and I really just wanted to create beautiful packaging so that more people could be comfortable with it as well. Great. Great. Um, I have a really good question here. Um, how do you get the client to buy into using sustainable materials? While sustainable materials are available, they are not necessarily the most economical option. That can be a big challenge for a brand in the early stages of their business. Any suggestions? Yeah, talk to your printers and your vendors. I know Sappy is coming out with some amazing sheets. Um, from our early conversations with Sappy, and I know the ones that we chose for Sweet Dirt, but they other they also have compostable options compostable films that are coming out that are amazing, but we're seeing huge strides in compostable materials. You do have to search for them a little bit more. You do need to talk to your print, um, printers and vendors. Of course, it comes down to lead time. And what I always suggest is when you do go sustainable, make sure to do product testing because you could have a beautiful sustainable project and you might want to go into a compostable film or a compostable packaging. However, it's not going to keep the product fresh as long. So you always want to think through the end user and when they're getting your product, that you have this beautiful marriage of the right material with the right sustainability mission to it. That's going to render the best product in the end as well. But different vendors, I mean, I'm seeing so many even online vendors having more compostable um, PLA, plastic corn options. So it's coming out. It's just it's still a little bit expensive and you need to have the right client who's willing to maybe spend a little bit more um, in the long run to, you know, make a difference. Yeah, it's definitely important to convince the client the, the long-term impact of it all. So, yeah. um, uh, did you test any spectra before settling on Proto? So we did not test on that sheet. This was really a suggestion from JS McCarthy's when we were looking at all of our finishes and timing. So it was also not only the fact that it was nearby in the Sappy Mill that they were producing this paper at the Sappy Mill just up the road from J.S. McCarthy. It was ease of being able to get this stock at the right time to pull everything together, and it made the most sense for the brand and for all the finishing. So and that's that, that down to sometimes you can't get other things. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be flexible within your print process as well and trust your printers um, when you tell them what you want. I trust that they're going to come back with some amazing solutions. Nice. Um, the other question that kind of follows through with that, how long was the project from start to finish? Oh my gosh. I think those are things we forget about after a while. Mm -hmm. uh, we This launched in, let's see, it was late 2020. Um, and I would say a good six to nine months. Six to nine months. Wow. Okay. So yeah, the so timing was everything here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and then was someone had a question about if the botanical illustration was made in-house? Yes, we did illustrate that piece in-house. And we went through a few different iterations and renditions of it, too, before we kind of nailed down on what we wanted that overall look to be. Great. Um, what elements do you need to consider in the design with the ever-changing regulatory landscape in cannabis? Oh, well, we put on you've got that, that THC warning on there. The beauty of Sweet Dirt, too, is that they have their own brick and mortar store. So um, everything there between, you know, lock bags and making sure that things are child resistant packaging, 
we know that it was being sold in their store and everything was leaving an exit bag. So it allowed us some flexibility to know that everything was going to be leaving correctly from the dispensary side and then also making sure we had child resistant packaging and tamper resistant packaging as well. So and sometimes when you're looking at those bags and film, they're they're sealed but they're harder to open or they have a two part pull and open zipper. So just little details, but I do see that quite a bit even with online bag printers now having that child resistant packaging, which is key. There's so much more on the market now than there was two years ago, which is really amazing also. You've got a lot more options. Great, great. Um, and someone had a question, what pieces did you have to source from out of state? So the labeling was one piece that we did source from out of state initially just because of speed. Uh, so some of those were done with um, more, I mean, throughout New England, to be honest, I don't think we went that much further than New England, nice. but those were metallized film labels and then opaque white, everything everywhere. We didn't want them to be shiny and allowing that little copper glimmer to kind of pop through. It's beautiful. Um, another question we have here is how did you get the client to follow a certain illustrative style or do you pivot on that also? So the style was collaborative, to be totally honest, because we had gone through a few different iterations and they had really landed on wanting to kind of go into this setting that felt you know, very incredibly special. And like the cannabis was growing in that landscape and outdoors and having these moments in, in Maine. So it didn't it wasn't hard to get them to lock on to the style. They had really loved that visual and that identity for the brand. And then it was a matter of making it come to life. Nice. And the last question I have is, what was the print and finish on the pre-roll label? That was a metalized film. Metalized film. Yeah, so just label stock on a metalized film. You can do so much with metalized film on a, a solid opaque white. <laughs> <laughs> nice tip here for everyone. Um, well, the project is beautiful. I loved your presentation and going through everything. Um, Taja, I'm going to put, is it okay if I put your Instagram on the chat? of Pulp and Wire um, if you want, if you have a question that wasn't answered or you just want to connect, um, Pulp and Wire is on Instagram and I'm going to put it on here in the chat. Perfect. And um, I really appreciate you doing this for us and getting so much insight on printing and how this project came to life and definitely for this type of product. And it's really interesting to kind of see some challenges, but like really the beautiful outcome that came from all of this. So um, thank you so much for your time and doing this for us. Um, this will be on demand shortly after everyone who registered will get an email. And it's also on the homepage of the die line. So um, please go there. Thank you to Sappy, our sponsor, and for um, providing us all of this wonderful information about paper and you, how you worked with them. They're really a wonderful paper company. So thank you for that. Um, and Thanks, Taja. Have a great rest of your day. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much, Jessica. This was wonderful. And thank you for allowing us to share the Sweet Jerk project. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks. Okay.